one particularly interesting factor in representing the 19th century stage on the, in this case, 20th century stage, takes me into a production at the Bristol Vic. In 1966, while still at school, I saw as part of the Bristol Vic's bicentenary season a play called 60,000 Nights, a history of the Theatre Royal from its inception in 1776, the script by the theatre historian George Rowell and the music by Julian Slade, who had been the composer of the Bristol Vic's most successful 1950s production, Salad Days. Seeing on stage so many scenes from 19th century plays, so many impersonations of 19th century actors was an extraordinary experience and I still remember it as one of the great theatre experiences of my life. In front of me I have the Theatre Royal Souvenir programme for the special occasion when the play was performed to a, a special select audience. I wasn't in that. It was particularly wonderful because the theatre was the star. The theatre, not just the stage, the auditorium, the whole space was used and turned into the star of the play. And of course, a theatre built in the 18th century and still the oldest working theatre in Britain was the perfect venue for that sort of production. A number of subsequently quite well-known actors appeared in this and I want to say something about those who appeared and the roles they played. Barbara Lee Hunt, very much a leading lady in the Bristol Vic at this time, represented Sarah Siddons in the role of Isabella and written into the play was actually a scene from the original play which Lee Hunt played as Siddons might have played it. And just prior to her performance, we see her here with her husband, her daughter, and her son is also going to play her son in this particular scene prior to her going on stage in 1779. The play moves through into the 19th century and beyond and the next cameo, which is particularly successful, was an actor called Gorn Granger. Gorn Granger then was playing roles like Romeo, was a very popular Bristol Vic actor at the time and I think some predicted a great future for him. He played Keen playing the famous role of Sir Giles Overreach in A New Way to Pay All Debts. And he played the role as Keen, drunk. So we've got this double performance, an actor playing Keen, but also playing Keen given a drunken and very dangerous performance. And this particular image shows perhaps what it was like acting with Keen if this particular image does justice to the reconstruction. From Keane, we moved into the middle of the century and, for instance, there was a song all about thanking Mr MacReady for bringing gas into the theatre, for creating light, for making it possible to have special effects with trap doors, green fire and red fire all through special effect lighting. And we moved into the 1860s with Ellen Terry as a very young woman playing the role of Cupid in a burlesque version of the play from the 19th century. And Jane Asher, then involved with Paul McCartney, which gave a lot of extra publicity to the production, and also in the company to play roles like Juliet. We see her here in costume. On top of her performance in role, we also see her here with some of the other cast members of Endymion, of course with Cupid's bow. In this further scene from the play, we get a sense of a sort of recreation of a rather artificial Victorian scenic background to Endymion. This was perhaps one of the highlights of the production, probably the scene I most remember as being quite extraordinary. We moved then into the late 19th century and not long after Ellen Terry was visiting in 1867, a very young Paul Eddington is playing Henry Irving at the beginning of his career. And although The Bells with Henry Irving, to the best of my knowledge, was never produced at the Bristol Vic, there is a scene in which Paul Eddington as Irving actually talks about the fact that he would like to play the role of Matthias and he tries it out on the Bristol Vic stage when nobody else is there just to get a sense of what it might be like in a theatre. So we get one of Matthias's key scenes 
uh, as performed by Paul Eddington as a young Erding, throughout the play there are a number of songs. The main Julian Slade number is called Dear Theatre of Ours, where everybody appears on stage and celebrates the theatre. Towards the end of the play, we have a reprise from Salad Days, we said we'd never look back, and then the play ended with another Dear Theatre of Ours reprise. I have to say, it's one of the most fantastic evenings I've ever spent in a theatre. I still look back to it with fond memories, and it was a wonderful introduction to 19th century theatre and how well it can work within an old theatre like the Bristol Vic and bring old plays, old actors back to life.